structure and clear limits. This is one that every youth will argue they don't need, but I'll argue with them back. Look at the two of you just lying around, so there's nothing to do. For heaven's sake, be creative. Go build a snowman or something. She did say, or something. Oh, another fender bender. Screech, bam. Because you see what they built for a snowman? <laughs> That's more of a snow woman, if you ask me. Young people need rules. They need clear limits. Why? Why do they need them? Oh, microphone. Sorry. <laughs> Sometimes they can't understand what the repercussions are going to be based on what their actions are. They don't see the second or third step ahead. Right. It's only the initial response that they can actually uh, predict. That's right, and we can flip back to where we said they're sensation seeking, not so good at judgmental, not thinking about the consequences. That's who they are. Their brain is developing that way right now. So who gives them the structure and clear limits? A caring adult, right? Somebody who cares, right? Somebody who can provide it. Youth need to feel a sense of security. They need to know what is what and that they feel safe. And they also need to be part of the process of defining the structure and the clear limits, right? I can go back to the discussion I had with my 14-year-old. You'll be home at 10. No, how about 10.30, right? I, I can give a little, you know, if you, if, you, if you come to me and we talk about it and you understand, and I understand, we can give some, not a problem, right? As opposed to, you'll be home at 10, that is the law, that is it, done. Right? Some of us grew up in those houses, and how happy were we? We didn't have a choice. <laughs> That's right, there was no real choice, right? They need the structure and the clear limits. I can give an example of structure and clear limits that worked really well. I used to, uh, in my Y days, you know, um, we opened a youth center in conjunction with the police department. And uh, it was open three nights a week. And it was right in the heart of our uh, geared to income housing complex in our, you know, smaller community. So there was a real need. There wasn't a lot of parental support in that community. There were substance abuse and mental health issues. And, you know, it's your typical youth center that was built to try and and uh, assist with the social uh, situation at the time. And I had this one girl who would come in, her name was Ashley, and she was kind of shy and quiet, never really said a word. Uh, she was 14, and she would come every night it was open, and she would be there the whole night, and she would leave, and she wasn't the trouble kid, she wasn't the kid that, she'd come uh, into the youth center one night, and she said, Brenda, you're not gonna believe this. And I said, what? She said, I just won the public speaking contest at school. I said, that's great. I said, what did you talk about? She said, the youth center. I said, great, let me hear your speech. So we pulled everybody into the room and she started talking. And she talked for three and a half minutes about all the different activities. You know, they hadn't experienced sardines before. They'd never played kick the can. They had these staff introducing just these basic things. But the one thing that they all valued was the rules. They understood what time it opened and what time it closed. They understood the expectations of what the behavior was. They understood what the consequences were if you broke any of the rules. They were clearly defined, they were posted on the wall, and they loved the fact that staff would enforce them. So if a kid come in and broke the rules, staff would give the consequences that, consequence that was allocated and move it on, right? She spoke about this in her classroom, she won. She went on to the Legion, because that's who does public speaking, and won regionally, went on to the province, didn't do so well there, because you know she got a little nervous. But she became my best advocate for all of the funding meetings I ever had to go to because I would take her to the Rotary Club and the Lions Club and let her give her speech and talk about it. Structure and clear limits, although every kid will say I hate the rules, they know that they need them. And it's up to us to make sure that we provide them. Okay. All right. Is that the last one? That's all seven, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So seven of them. We'll go back to the very first one and summarize the seven. Mastery and achievement. Somebody tell me what that means to them now that they've heard, they've seen the Jeremy cartoon. What is mastery and achievement in a nutshell? Nice and loud. I know you're ready. Come on. I'm Ben Wong. You want to talk to Margaret? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> did, did you see her jump up? Oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> to stand all of a sudden. Okay. Tell me, uh, what does mastery and achievement mean to you now? 
Sorry, did I just date myself saying hold on to you? Yes, I totally did. I would say it, it's feeling the, the success of doing something you felt uncomfortable about and, and doing it well. Okay. Trying something new and doing it well. Right? It's a good answer. How about physical good job, activity? Benoit. Good job, Benoit. <laughs> good job. Right, good answer. Okay. Let's talk about physical activity. What's physical activity? Anybody? Moving around. Moving around. Okay. How about self definition? Remember that one? Put it into quick terms. Figuring out who you are as an individual. Fil figuring out how you are as an individual and how you fit into the bigger picture and where you're going to be when the picture you know, gets older. Right? Creative expression. Can, go ahead. Um, giving youth the ability to express themselves creatively through, right. through art, through, <coughs> through sports. Yeah. The, the opportunity to express <coughs> yourselves in a creative fashion. Yeah. Okay? Positive interactions with peers and adults. We don't need to explain that. that. That is what it is. They need youth and they need adults. <coughs> and they need those relationships to be as positive as they possibly can. Meaningful participation. Feeling like you're doing something important and making a difference. Feeling like you're doing something important and making a difference. And structure and clear limits. Rules. Rules. With consequences. Yeah. Consequences for critical thinking. Right? We talked about that when we were talking about the outcomes. If these seven developmental needs of youth are in place, your outcomes are going to happen. Right? Clear? Make sense? Easy terms? Easy for everybody in the world to understand all these like real key little phrases <coughs> that you can start dropping into conversations when you're talking to people. Right? One of the things with the developmental needs of youth is that Parks and Recreation Ontario has developed a tool. It's called the IYD, which is Intentional Youth Development. It's an evaluation tool that can be used to evaluate the culture of your organization, the readiness of your organization, and the components of your programs and services that you provide. And what it does is it matches it directly to the developmental needs. And um, I believe if you go to the Parks and Rec Ontario website, there's at least some information under uh, education and training that you can click on, and it'll put you to the people that you need to be in contact with to, to do that training. I know that they're looking at creating an online module for it too. So. And it's a great one. And a lot of after school programs are starting to use it because it just reinforces all these discussions we're having and starts to build that sustainability piece so that you can pass it on to the next person as they go through the system. Okay. Any questions about the developmental needs? Any aha moments? Anybody have a rock fall on their head that you know woke them up and said, oh my goodness, I didn't know that? Okay. Okay, you can comment. No, I want to, the, the structure and clear limits, uh, a lot of people probably, as they say it, probably say yes, that is true. A, a lot of youth right now in between 12 to 19, they want to see the fairness. Mm -hmm. And a lot, they feel like this is not fair because everything around them might not be fair. So when they come to the community center and a kid is running, stop running, stop running, everybody's told the same thing. So that's why they love the rules and the structure because everybody gets treated the same. Consistency. Right? And yeah, it comes down to consistency because not every parent at home is consistent based on a lot of things, but when, when you come to a community center, they like that rules because everybody gets treated fairly. So I, I know that's one major thing. They all want to see everybody treated fairly. There's no hierarchy. Just That's right. And that's like my, my youth prodigy, who now, by the way, is a teacher's assistant at a local university. She, is, uh, she did that. That's what she talked about. The rules are posted. We know the consequences. They're enforced equally. That's what they love. That's what they need to have. Because even within their own home, sometimes siblings are treated differently. There's not that consistency. That can create part of their own identity as they're trying to self-define. And you know, it has that ripple effect. Okay. All right, the seven developmental needs right there in front of you.